we live in a time where the leadership education has become almost defunct in anybody except for the super wealthy. The super wealthy have it. They have the classics. They have the mentors. They have the, the prep schools and the Ivy League schools, but they approach it differently. They really do approach it differently. Let me give you an example. I'm going to make this up. This is not true. This never happened, but it's indicative because it is so truthful. It, it's happened hundreds of times. The names are changed. John Smith grew up here in American Fort. Good guy, did well. His dad, uh, uh, you know, uh, dad a local professional um, and did well in school and gets a scholarship to Harvard. And he's all excited. He's got this scholarship to Harvard. He's going to go back to Harvard. And he goes back to Harvard for the year and he comes home for spring break. And they're having a barbecue in the back. And uh, his dad, they're there with a few friends and they're barbecuing and they're, you know, playing some, some hoop and... Uh, talking, and his dad says, oh, so, so John, what are, you, what are you studying at Harvard? I mean, they're really proud of him, and, you know, and, and John says, well, I'm studying literature. Dad stops his grilling. Well, literature? What are you going to do with that? Son, you know, I was the first one in my family to go to college, and, uh, and we just thought with this opportunity for you, I mean, why don't you, you know, this is a great opportunity for you. Why don't you do something good like pre-law or pre-med or engineering? I mean, for heaven's sakes, literature. And John says, I know, I know, Dad. And he goes back and changes his major. Well, the same spring break, his, his roommate, John Mahoney Fuller Rockefeller III, <laughs> went home and while he was at spring break he had a little talk with his dad too and his dad uh, you know they were there drinking cocktails a black tie with a few friends and his dad said so son what are you, what are you majoring in over there at Harvard and actually he didn't do that he called the dean and asked him but we'll pretend he forgot um, so he says what are, you, what are you majoring in over there at, at Harvard and John says well I'm majoring in engineering Pre-med. Son, we need to talk. There are lots of people who can be doctors and attorneys and engineers and accountants. We have high hopes for you. Um, you know, when, when you graduate, we've talked about bringing you on as a, as a junior director for a few years and just kind of see how you do with the company. And, but I, th I think there's a real chance for you to move up there. And Uncle Thomas has talked about stepping down with his congressional seat, and we're thinking maybe we'd run you at some point. And if nothing else, we want you to serve on the board of the foundation. I, we need you to be able to think, son. Why don't you major in something good like 17th century French poetry? And John says, yeah, you know, I've, I, th that's probably true. And so John goes back and switches his major, and the class system is perpetuated. And the future of our country and the freedom impact of our country is, is, is influenced by what would be a seemingly small decision. Like I said, I, I just made up those names, made up the scenario, but the scenario happens all the time. Some people get conveyor belt education, some people get professional education, and some people get leadership education. And the tragedy of it all is this. We live in a country that depends on its citizens to be leaders.